think a lot of students have just gotten another sense of how to belong and how to create relationships outside of what were the traditional avenues. And a lot of my students talk about how they feel safe in the eSports program, and that's their family, that's their community. And I think that eSports gives kids a future that they might otherwise not have. Man, I wish that had been available when I was in high school. Hello everyone and welcome to the Arkansas Activity Association Rocket League Grand Final presented by Play Versus. I am Perino. I am joined by my co-host and co-caster, Audio. Some more phenomenal Rocket League action coming up, Audio. Absolutely. We have a wonderful matchup for you today. The finals of the Arkansas Activities Association. It is going to be Van Buren taking on Rogers High School. Both these teams have had phenomenal runs throughout the season, making it all the way to the playoffs. But at the end of the day... It all comes down to one best of seven series. You can show up today or you can go home in second place. Yes, both of these teams have worked so hard to get to this point. I cannot wait to see how these two teams match up on the field. Both teams coming in with incredibly strong records. They have put in the time, the effort, the dedication to get so strong in this game. I am so excited. I have no idea who's going to take it home. But as you said, only one can come out on top. Yeah, talking about that dedication, these teams, they've worked hard to come to this. I mean, when you're thinking of esports, this isn't just kind of lounging around on the couch playing video games. I mean, they're putting in the hours, practicing five, six hours a day after school. They're having team bonding. Like This is, by all means, a sport that these students are so, per are so good at, and they performed at such a high level, they've been able to make it all the way here. Yes, they absolutely have as we jump into our bracket in just a moment. Again, just giving a reminder to everyone, this is the second season of eSports in Arkansas, and teams are competing from the Hot Springs Convention Center with computers provided by Hendricks College. Hendricks College has developed eSports as an official sport at the private institution with practices, workout programs, nutrition guides, and a sponsor lab. Hendricks College is proud to assist in the continued development of eSports in the state and to provide equipment and staff for the Arkansas State Championship. So really great opportunities for these high school players to come in. They're playing together at LAN with your teammates and your friends all on the line. Such a cool experience for them. What a great opportunity. A big thank you to the Hendricks College for supporting these players, supporting you know the organization behind them, and providing all that equipment because it can really make a difference when you know, you're going from just – Kind of that, you know, the isolated environment where you're just playing by yourself and just really turning this into a team sport. And that is exactly what they're doing. It's also what Play Versus has been doing. Got to give a shout out to our sponsors. They have been doing great work across the nation, setting up esports programs just like this. And at the high school level, this is now a recognized sport. This is not just an afternoon club where people get together and play some video games with each other. There are there are actual leagues. There are coaches. There are support staff. These players put in a lot of hard work and effort and there's a lot of great opportunities for them if they can perform at the highest level when you're thinking beyond high school there's college scholarships we see professional players in tournaments for tens of millions of dollars they're getting paid either salary or in prize pools so this is an absolutely phenomenal just kind of like surge in the last couple of years play versus really helping to just pioneer the industry and I wish this had been something when oh, I was right? in high school. It's so cool. It's such a great alternative, I think, to our more traditional sports like football, basketball, soccer, whatever. Being able to provide these students with an outlet to compete at a really high level, but compete within a domain that they're familiar with, it's such a phenomenal opportunity. And I'm so glad that Play Versus is working with all of these different state associations to get this recognized and get it on the board. This is treated... As a varsity sport, you know, these are kids who put in the time, the effort, the practice to do so. As you mentioned, it's not just going home and playing video games. It's having faith and trust in your teammates, working together, working with coaches, trying to improve. And those are all skills that can be translated, not just through high school, but later in life as well. Yeah, it's kind of the mentality behind, well, you can go home, you can play a game of pickup basketball, but it's it's com a completely different beast than when you have a team of basketball players who regularly meet up, they practice, they work on their plays, and, and they compete against other schools, and all of that pressure being put onto them to really perform exceptionally, whereas you know the pickup game is a much more relaxed that's kind of the difference that Play Versus has created here. They've allowed us an environment where players can really be 
the best of the best in their area, and I, I think that's just absolutely incredible. And it's such a different feeling playing for your school. You have that that pride element as well because you're not just representing yourself. You're representing your school, your community, your friends, and everything else that comes with that. So such a awesome opportunity for these players. It's so cool. I love doing this stuff. As again, we switch on over to our bracket here. Yeah, let's take a look at this bracket. You can see it is going to be the Van Buren Pointers taking on the Rogers Mountaineers. The Mountaineers went through the Alpha Dogs and the Wolves to get to the championships as the Pointers went through the Flaming Flamingos you know, and the Tigers Rocket League team. So there's only one spot left, though. And that's the only spot that matters. It is that champion spot you see on the right side of there of the screen. One of these two teams will have their name there by the end of the night. Let's talk a little bit about Rocket League in general because a lot of people coming into this may be a bit unfamiliar with the esports scene. It's a relatively new industry. There's tons of games popping up that are very well-fleshed esports. So Rocket League, at its core, what is it? So it's soccer with cars that use rocket-powered boosts. I'm sold. It, it's, it's a very simple in concept, right? It's, it's five minutes a game. Whoever scores the most goals wins, but there's so much depth to this game. It, it may look simple on the outside, but trust me, get your hands on a controller, get in the game, and let me tell you, it is nerve-wracking, <laughs> it is difficult, it's awe-inspiring in many ways. Players can dribble the ball on the ground, they can fly through the air with their rocket boost to score goals. It's really frenetic, it's fast-paced, I love it. It's so dynamic and exciting, and it's nice because it mirrors... Again, traditional sports as well. It, it's sort of a blend of almost hockey and soccer in the sense that, you know, the gameplay mirrors that we're just trying to score goals. So it's, it's easy to understand, but it's so difficult to get through all of the different competitive levels and to be at the very top of your game takes so much time. And that's one of my favorite things about Rocket League is it is... A, a more familiar concept. You know, I won't say simple because that kind of diminishes the, you know, the amount of skill that it takes to really perform, as you said. It takes a lot of skill. Um, it does. But for a lot of people not knowing much about the esports industry or about the individual esports, uh, you can come into Rocket League and you can easily understand what's going on because it is similar to hockey or soccer, uh, you know, football, if you're you know, not in America because we're the only country that calls it that. Um, but y you can understand that, hey, there's a ball and both these teams are trying to get into the opposing team's goal. And that number up there at the top, the amount of goals, like that's going to tell me who's winning. Whereas you can look at some of the other esports, and there's all these different things going on that you've never heard of before, and it feels like you almost need a college degree to even understand <laughs> it and be getting – uh, to know what's going on. But Rocket League, it's a bit more familiar, so a lot more people can get into it. It's much an easier uh, viewing experience. But like you said, so many nuances. The aerial movement, one of the biggest ones. Not only do you have giant rocker boosters strapped to the <laughs> back of your car, but there, it, there's almost a feeling of low gravity. This game kind of defies physics where you, know, you can jump and do double flips with your cars and then add that movement on to the aerial movement possible with the boost that you have. can make some incredible shots where we see players driving a ball up a wall, off the ceiling, passing it midair to a teammate, and then bringing it home for the goal. And th Those are really the moments that define Rocket League, those incredible shots shots that these players can pull off that just make you go, wow. Yes, Rocket League is a game where because it is only three players versus three players, individual mechanical skill can have such a tremendous impact. We may see it today where there might be an individual player who really stands out because they have that level of control, the level of finesse to execute these high-level plays. It takes so much, and I can't state it enough, it takes so much time to develop those skills. It it looks simple when you're spectating, right? When you're, sit <laughs> when you're sitting back on the couch at home and you're watching, you, it may look easy, but believe me, it is not. These players have put in hundreds, if not thousands of hours to perfect their craft. I mean, everybody's, you know, seen a football game where, you know, the quarterback throws a Hail Mary and they're like, that doesn't look too hard. I'm sure I can pull that off. And they go out with their friends and they realize, yes, it is that hard. It is that difficult to pull off. And only these seasoned, you know, veterans who have been playing this game for so long, but so many hours into their craft can really perform at the best of the best level. And we are just here to admire, you know, how good they actually are and bask in their glory. And not only that, because... 
as for as much as there is individual skill in this game, there is also an incredibly large team element to it. When you only have two other teammates on the field, you have to have faith and trust that they're going to be in the right spots at the right time to execute those high-level passing plays, to execute those great defensive stands, you know, having faith that someone's going to be on your back post ready to defend that shot or someone's going to be waiting in the midfield to try and push that ball into the opponent's net. You have to work together and you have to work as a team if you want to succeed. Yeah, in Rocket League, it's traditionally played on a very small maps and uh, there's a lot of mobility in the game with the extra boost that you have. You know, you're flipping through the air. Um, and, and so to that point, there's almost always an easy way for your opponent to stop what you're doing. So having that level of trust and not worrying about, hey, like I have to be looking over my shoulder to make sure my teammate is there before I make that pass and just making the pass. Yes, absolutely, because Rocket League is such a thinking game as well. It's one of the elements of it, I feel, that is so underappreciated. Well, it's about in those this split second thinking, right? And the anticipation as well, because you have to be able to read plays before they're happening, right? So you have to have the trust and the anticipation and the foresight to be able to be in those correct spots and make those great plays. When you see your teammate driving up on the wall, you have to have the anticipation, okay, they're making a play towards the middle. I have to be there for his pass so I can shoot. And then on the flip side, as a defender, when you see the opponent driving up the wall, you have to sit there and say, okay, I need to jump early and go to this spot because the pass is coming there and I need to contest the shot. All so, right. so much anticipation to it. You already had rocket-powered soccer and you just threw psychics into the mix. <laughs> I, did, I don't know how you did it, but you just made Rocket League even cooler. And I can't wait till we can actually get into the game and see some of these plays in action because – for all this hype, I mean, I just want to watch this phenomenal Rocket League. I'm one of those players that, you know, I love watching the game. I love talking about it. But I'll go home hyped up after seeing all these great plays, and I'll log in and try to do the same thing, and uh, it, it, it doesn't go the same way. <laughs> it, re it really is one of the most fascinating things because you watch very high-level play, right, whether it's professional, collegiate, or here on so Play Versus. They always make it look so easy, and then you jump back in. You know, you go home on your Xbox, your PlayStation, your PC, wherever you play. And you try to replicate it, and it's and it's mind blowing because the mechanics are so refined in this game, and everything happens so fast. It it takes, I I feel like I'm a <laughs> broken record. It takes so much time to get there, and I just I can't wait to see these players have all that time pay off for them. Yeah, unfortunately, we are going to have to wait just a little bit longer. We're having some technical difficulties with the players getting into games. So we're going to go into a short break while we get that resolved. Don't go anywhere. The first game between Rodgers and Van Buren will be coming up soon. This is getting an email about how excited a parent is that their, their student is involved and is having a great time and wants to talk about their esports experience. I've always been a gamer. I usually wanted to play the single player role playing games in the WoW and StarCraft. I didn't really know a lot about esports. I didn't realize the extent of how large it was. Our athletic director walked into my office. He's like, just watch this video. It was a promo reel that said, esports is coming or something, games to be announced, and it was this hype video. And I was like, we have to do this. He's like, I don't have a coach. I was like, oh. When do we start? How do we do this? I would say that I'm actually stepping into the students. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We are in game one. Everyone is set in the lobby, and we already have an opening goal. Van Buren High School jumping out to a quick lead here in the beginning of game number one. Dewey, the one that was able to find that strike, Van Buren, an early lead. You know, starting at five minutes on the clock, that means first 30 seconds, Van Buren were able to actually find a goal. Fantastic good, or fantastic start by them. Yes, absolutely, as we jump right back into it here, Roger is going to be facing additional offensive pressure from Van Buren. Oh! JoJo just not able to find the correct read on the ball there. You can see Van Buren came in, straight shot into the middle, but uh, Monstradile you know, just, just dashed the wrong way. Yes, it can be such a difficult thing to read those shots from the attacker there. He really has the entire net to shoot at, just trying to place it either misguided shot towards the near post or towards the far post. 
really excellent shot placement though from B Van Buren. They're coming out strong early game one. Yeah, they've already scored two goals coming into this one. RH Fellow is able to get it up over the defender, and he scores! Really nice placement from Fellow here. Just a great individual play to work it all the way through the midfield. That shot placement is so good, bouncing off the post and in. You love to see those calculated angles. A quick response from Rodgers. And great to see that they're coming back out and answering just as aggressively as Van Buren are when you're getting into some of these matches. He does it again! Fellow right off the kickoff. You just love to see that straight off the kickoff. Makes a great read towards the ball. Getting that speedy kickoff all the way through just absolutely dusts his opponent. And that's, that's about as quickly as you'll get to an equalizer two goals down. Well, the point I was trying to make, because I only got about five seconds to make it, was coming into these championship series, you're going up against some of the stiffest competition you've had all season. So when you fall down, you know, two goals really early on here, it can be, you know, really taxing on your mental game. Great to see that Rodgers is staying strong and they're being aggressive. And to that point, again, coming into this, Rodgers High School has only dropped one game through seven series. That's incredible. Van Buren has only dropped five out of a, a full seven series set. So neither of these teams are used to losing games. I mean, he, so this is difficult. really a clash of titans. You saw a fellow there made another very nice looking goal, but it was blocked by Butter. This man has just been on a mission to put Rogers High School on his back right now as he now comes all the way back to defense to turn that ball away. Another great save that time by Monster. As you can see his camera view, Dewey going up high for the block. Not able to get it in time. Fellow with the long goal. And I love the pace that both of these teams are playing at. Just giving no space whatsoever to the opposition. Did that ball curve. That looked like it curved. You, you know, they don't curve in the air, but when they bounce off the ground, sometimes that spin can actually put it in. Believe it or not, it does happen. There's a little bit of spin effect. It's not a lot but it can be just enough to put that ball in the net instead of outside. I think it may have ju been just as enough to get Fellow his third goal of the game. Of course, assist there by Monster you know, when he actually did save the, the shot. But Fellow, I mean, what's an incredible play from him that we've seen all three goals on his team. Obviously, the rest of his team has been there to back him up, but he has just been the designated striker in this game one. Yes, shooting is one of the most difficult mechanics in this game because you have to be so precise and so quick with your touch. You have to adapt to different angles and find really nice placement. We've seen Fellow strike from really deep in the midfield to get these goals. So I think Van Buren, they have to adjust. They have to respect his shooting ability from distance. That they do, and it can be so hard because it seems like Rodgers only has to send one member up. It's always just Fellow on the attack, and they're able to leave Umbrium and Monster back on defense. And so when you have one player that's good enough to find those three, as a great save by Umbreon, keeps this one, this one point lead, how do you actually look to stop somebody of that caliber? Well, you just simply have to give them the respect. You have to consistently anticipate that they're going to or you put just the take ball them off on the field. <laughs> or you can do that too, as JoJo illustrates right there. This is a nice passing play. Great across there by Umbreon, but just a little bit too high. Bounces off the top bar. You can see Butter. He's dribbling it down, throws it up into the air. But Umbreon knocks that one away. And I'm so impressed by the mechanics individually from these players in this first game here. You notice that nice little flick we touch, we call it there, using the double jump in your car to generate that height and that power on that pass. Really, really nice. Seems about, I think, as even as they can be. All of these players are pulling off some technical moves like we have never seen before. I mean, I at least personally could never even dream of thinking of some of these moves that they're making, but they are pulling them off. Seems like they've done it a million times before. Right now it is Rogers High School with the possession of the ball. They're looking to make this their fourth goal. Van Buren, they have to score in the next 45 seconds if they want to take this to overtime. Yes, and Rogers doing a really nice job of still applying that pressure. They're not allowing Van Buren to move out of their half of the field. It's the easiest way to stop them. That goal nearly going in from Monster. Just not quite the right angle. Puts it up a little bit too high, but a best, the best defense is a great offense, and that is the philosophy Rogers is putting here together. Fellow goes up for a very high block. Still stays on the Rogers side of the field, though. Van Buren, they have 20 seconds to get it in. It has to be soon. It certainly does. 
as Butter makes a great stop there. Fellow was lurking for that. This, this one here. could be it. Umbreon turns it away. And with five seconds left, once that ball hits the ground and the timer strikes zero, it will be over. Butter, one last look. He keeps it in the air for a couple seconds longer, but the Mountaineers come out with the early win. And a really great game back and forth from both schools here. A hat trick, though, from Fell is enough to do it. This one going in the favor of Rodgers. I love the intensity early. And what a hat trick, because coming out early, we saw Van Buren. I mean, they got two goals in the first 30 seconds. When, you, when you're up against this caliber of a team and you see that aggressiveness come through, it's very easy to say, wow, guys, we're out of our league here. Like, you know, maybe we were just the big fish in a small pond. But Fellow specifically keeping his cool and just taking the attack, he bought back so much time for his team and just so much uh, momentum, too, now going into this game, too. If you don't fall down to two goals in the first 30 seconds, what is it going to take to defeat you? And such great resolve, right? Because we talked about it earlier, but having the added pressure of being there in person, on land, you're away from your home setup. It's an environment that you're not necessarily familiar with on a very different setup. It can be so nerve-wracking because you know the game is being broadcast. You know there are people watching as well. So really nice to see Rodgers hold on to that and use their faith in one another and their faith in their ability to strike back. That kickoff goal that we saw as well cool. helps, so, helps so much, right? Because they, they find one, and then to immediately find the second is such a confidence boost. Yeah, however, can't take away from Van Buren there. I mean, obviously coming out with two goals in the first 30 seconds is a feat that – you know, is so impressive. I mean, not even Rodgers was able to do that uh, as their goals were a little bit more spread out throughout the game. So I have no doubt that going through this series, they're going to make this a really tough run for Rodgers. I mean, we have plenty more games left to play. It's first of four, best of seven. So there, there's a lot of Rocket League left to play, and I don't think this is going to be a one-sided stomp. Oh, absolutely not. Both teams had really great looks on goal. It just so happened that Fellow was able to find the net from those spots away. But guys, we're going to jump right into game number two here. Rogers has taken game number one. Can Van Buren answer right away? We will find out right now. And after a first game loss, you always kind of have to shake that one off. I mean, Fellow coming out with those really quick three goals. After that, though, they weren't able to score anymore. It really seemed like Van Buren, they adapted to how Fellow was playing and his aggressive style. They said, okay, we know how to take care of you now. And, you know, voila, they weren't scored on for the rest of the game. So this second this second game is really where they can come out now and say, hey, we figured you out, and you're not getting more than one off of us. Yes, absolutely. And you can see the adjustment already. Van Buren playing a little bit deeper, respecting that ability from Fellow to generate those long shots as they just... Rotate around backside here. They're going to take their time, and they're really going to not give Fellow that kind of space to shoot the ball. Ooh, Umbreon, though, he's keeping it aggressive on the opposing side of the field. JoJo, he has a good look, but Umbreon is there to knock it away. You saw Dewey trying to play some interference, but just a little bit right on the goal. And it can be such a great strategy to try and take your opponent straight out of the play. Using that physicality to remove the defenders can be really advantageous, but you need the shot placement behind it. That one not on target, even though the bump came through, no goal to show. All right, now we see the ball just coming past back and forth right now. There's a couple of shots being made. Fellow with a good turn away, make sure the other lead doesn't come through. And there it is, Dewey 4-1-3 is able to find a great look off of the top. And I love that we get the player view camera here. You can see it from his angle. That ball finds the crease between the ceiling and the backboard. It just drops straight down for him. He had the read the entire way. The defenders did not. That ball lurking on the goal line. Dewey just puts it home. What a shot. He set it up. He knocked it down. That was, you know, really Dewey's play. And like you said, that kind of patience to just put it right before the goal. You saw Rodgers, they were up above the goal looking to defend that one, but that you know, just little drop there was enough to put it in. Those are the kind of split second you know, technical difficulties that we, we really see these players have that allow them to come on, on top. Absolutely, and it's the anticipation as well. When you put the ball that high on the backboard, 
you have to have faith that, hey, this might actually take a bounce straight down. I have to be ready to score on my own as this one's going to come right through. Monster Dill finds a, the tie there with an assist from his team. As you see, he just kind of shot over to the middle. Nobody there to defend. JoJo tried, didn't have the angle. You know, really catapulting backwards is a bit more difficult because you can't use the boost to help you. Yes, yeah, so and there's a little bit of aggression aggressive positioning from JoJo there. He had a ton of faith in his teammates to make that passing play in midfield work. The connection wasn't quite there though. He just kind of got caught out on defense as we could get another one. Monster deal with the assist from Umbreon. Another great goal here from Rogers. And it's no longer just the fellow Joel. We see the rest of the team really coming into their own in the second game. Yes, and I think a little bit of panic there on the behalf of the Van Buren defense, just jumping for that ball a little bit too quickly. You get scored on once, you get a little bit nervous. I wonder if it's the mental side of it there. They just have to take a breather and have faith that they can succeed. Will comes up in the air, he's looking for the shot. It's gonna be knocked away, but are not able to find the completion on that one. And Fellow has just been so phenomenal this entire series. Really, the entire team, Rogers, showing some incredible technical moves. But they are still only one goal up, and we have two minutes left in regulation. There's plenty of rocket-powered soccer to play, folks. Oh, there absolutely is. Goals can happen so quickly in Rocket League. All it takes is one mistake for the other team to capitalize upon, and we can see a goal happen. There's really such a great feeling to be up a goal, but you have to be careful because oh, it's it, could, it, could dis too. it could disappear very quickly. You always have to watch out for that one shot that might take it away. Van Buren trying to take the lead away from Rodgers right now as they have had the last 30 seconds so aggressive. This drive has been you know, just shot after shot for them, but it keeps getting turned away by Rodgers. Nobody able to find the look there. Butter up into the air just to keep it away from the goal. That was some incredible aerial movement, if I've ever seen it. Yes, and it's coming down to smart positioning and having that confidence to go up for that early, right? The positioning in front of your own net to deny the opportunity. Really, really smart. Fellow there just sitting in the goal, and he was ready for that shot. They were able to get it past two defenders, but that last one was the one that mattered there for Rogers High School, who just had to hold on one more minute. You saw them do this in game number one. They got a lead, and then they were never you know, really allowing Van Buren to get a look after that. They play the defense so well when they're ahead. They certainly do, but it can be so exhausting when you're under this much pressure. Van Buren, really in the last two minutes, they've had that possession in front of them, but they haven't really been able to generate too many looks they have to figure something out, only 30 seconds. Only 30 seconds to go, Dewey is able to both save it and put it on the opposing side of the field. Right now, Van Buren, once again, you're one point down to take this overtime. A goal in the next 10 seconds is what it's gonna take. There's a good luck, just barely left. JoJo's gonna try again as he centers it off to his teammate. Butter takes a shot, but he misses. Could this one be it? One oh, second left, it doesn't find the goal, and Rogers High School once again come out with a win, 2-0 now. That was such a great look for Ooh, Van Buren. I'm shaking. They had so much pressure at the end of that game there. All three players up, you have to go for it. No time left, you need that goal. Just not quite able to find the back of the net though. They had two really great looks within the last 10 seconds there. Oh my God, I can't believe they didn't get it. It looked like that ball froze in oh, front of the goal for like, it's one of those cartoons where you know, someone runs off a cliff and they, they take a second before they look down and realize they're about to fall. They just kind of freeze there. That's what that ball did. But I love the physicality. Let's bring that back up because you talked about how it's such an effective strategy. That's exactly what Rodgers did that game. There was nobody able to take the shot because Rodgers said, forget the ball. We're just going to make sure you can't even come within like a five meter radius of it. Oh, absolutely. So smart for them in the way that they played it. Once you play defense for that extended period of time, you have to give credit to Van Buren. Once they were down towards the latter half of that game, they really applied as much pressure as they could, and they almost got it to go. That but so that close. physical play from Rodgers, just keeping them off of those really good shots and those really good looks, they were able to find the passing, but it just couldn't quite finish all the way. Rodgers escaped with game number two. 
Yeah, and these are fast-paced games, folks, so really anything can happen. We've seen two games now where Rodgers have just barely come out on top by just a goal, and with Van Buren hot on their tails, we still have plenty of games left to play. Rodgers need to win the next two if they want to take this home with the 4-0 sweep. But, I mean, from, what, from how close that we've seen these games be, I really hope that's not the case. I would love to see every possible game we can out of these squads. Let's go seven. Oh, absolutely. And if you're Van Buren in the spot, I think you still feel really good about the yeah. way that you're playing. You've been, the latter half of that game in particular, you've been generating so much pressure on offense. They've really kept pace with Rodgers. It just hasn't quite come together for them in the form of a victory yet. I think you still can play confidently. You can still play to your game plan. It's working. It's just not quite there. A couple more breaks their way, and it could very easily be two of the other way. Oh, it it certainly could. And let's let's look back, all the way back to the first game, right, where we saw Van Buren out with the first two goals. They look to be an aggressive team. Once they figure out how Rodgers is played, they seem to do okay in these games. And so I think that this series might be a similar story. If they can just get an understanding of what's happening right there, they know what they need to do. JoJo to butter to goal. And it's so unfortunate because it ends up actually being an own goal. The last defender oh, there no. trying to clear that across. It is such a dangerous touch to make. He's just trying to deny it from the attacker there. Unfortunately for Rogers High School, that's not going to quite be the case. As the demolition playoff, the kickoff doesn't work. Dewey puts it right in. Rogers once again, we've been into this scenario before. They come off the, you know, they come off quick. As you can see, instead of going to the ball like you normally do, the players just go right at each other. Nobody is left to hit that one, and so the goalie comes up and says, fine, I'll do it myself. Nobody to defend. Yes, and it's and referred to as cheating in the Rocket League meta in the sense <laughs> you want to you push up close to that point of contact on the kickoff because if the ball does stay still, I oh, thought that was about that to go very in. That was well close. could have been a 3-0 lead for Van Buren. However, we've had them come off to early leads before. The question is this time, will they be able to hold on to it? It is a great question to ask. We know the scoring prowess of Rodgers here. That one almost swinging right in, but not quite. It feels like every goal is just almost there. At the, you know, it's the smallest of margins that separate that ball going into the net or being knocked away as a good look here from Fellow. But Dewey is there on the stop. It's thrown back, but now saved by JoJo. Rapid fire shots here from Rodgers High School. But eventually, it is going to be Van Buren who regained control and will now look up. Oh, that's such a great look. Oh, my goodness. That was such a great play. You saw how quickly they transitioned out from defense. Van Buren getting up and contesting these shots. Nearly found a great passing play to score in their own right. That was almost phenomenal. The fast break just a little bit off center means it won't go in. Rodgers is not going to make that same mistake twice. As they have control of it at the moment. Dewey comes up with a big save. And I mean, honestly, if you're Van Buren, I mean, you just have to hold on to this ball. They almost score again. They're going for that aggressive play style. But, I mean, you, you don't have to be aggressive here. You don't have to be, but I actually but you should be. But I love the adjustment from Van Buren. What they are doing is they are playing with absolutely no fear whatsoever. They are getting up in the grills of Roger High School. They are contesting everything. They're playing with pace. I love to see it. They're just saying, okay, we're going to play our game and we're going to go for it all no matter what. Good job by Dewey there coming up the wall and sending that ball to the opposite corner. Fellow takes another shot, but Jojo has been solid today on the defense. You saw Dewey there come up with a stop of his own. Van Buren right now just kind of hanging back, making sure none of these goals go over. They do have the lead here. 1v2, Jojo can knock it out. And really smart from Jojo there as you saw it in his player cam. Just waiting for that ball to drop, but this time Monster is going to break the defense for Rogers High School. He finally finds the look as Dewey goes up, but winning the contestion, he takes it around two and right up into that upper corner. That was textbook. It absolutely was. Just playing it high above the backboard there can be so effective. It's difficult for defenders to cover the oh, entirety of that backboard. Fellow with the kickoff look, but Butter was there, and that shot just a little bit too far to the right. That was one of those you know, quick goals. It can be so hard to actually get back and defend because you send two people up to attack that ball. You know, lucky for Van Buren that that one was just slightly off the mark. A little bit fortunate, yes, but 
Again, the defense is still in a great spot. Working together to try and clear that ball aside. I like the way Van Buren are playing, but they have to be careful. Two minutes to go. A goal here would be dangerous. Umbreon finds it, though. The long shot from downtown. A goalie goal as that. As he just sneaks it right over JoJo. Doesn't have the boost to get up into the air and is just too high for him to contest. And it's really been... It's really been the story for Rogers here. The way that they have been scoring have been these booming shots from their own half or from the midfield. They've just found they can catch Van Buren out on defense when they shoot from distance. Oh, that one turned away by Monster. That was three quick looks. All of them stopped as Rogers. They're just a brick wall right now. Cannot get past them. That one almost did as it comes off the top of the goal. It most certainly was a great look for Van Buren there. But it's the downfall of playing that aggressive, fast-paced style, right? When the other team picks up possession, if they can put the ball on target quickly from deep, you don't have the defenders back and in the right positions. Wormerin's in a good spot. That ball came down dangerously close to that scoring area. Right now, Monster and Umbreon just kind of tag-teaming this one, keeping it away from Van Buren. JoJo does go up to stop that shot. It's going to be put off the backboard. Centered here and nailed home by Monster. This is such a nice pass here. Look at the patience from Monster. Again, we talk about that crease of going high. So difficult to defend when the ball is that far above the net. You can really catch defenders out that way. Monster illustrating the patience necessary to score. And it's, a again, another great turnaround from Rogers High School. The second time now we've seen him make that very play. Seems to be a signature here. And Van Buren having a hard time finding answers to it. We are once again in a scenario where one minute left. Van Buren needs a single goal. This is where Rogers shines. This is where Van Buren has fallen short. Will they be able to rewrite their narrative here today? Louis making a great save there. And if the one positive from Van Buren comes out, it is this. Their pressure's been so good. That's a great save from Butter. Butter takes a really good looking shot and turns it away. As now JoJo will be the one to send it onto the offensive side of the field. Butter looking for the shot too far left. That one's got to sting. It might, but they still have the pressure. That's a good look. Fellow is going to take that one away. They have 12 seconds left. Fellow's going to take it on the aggressive. And this looks like it might be another victory for Rodgers, unless Dewey can find something here. But with one second left, that is going to end it all. And Mountaineers now 3-0, one game away from the clean sweep. This does not feel like a clean sweep. Series. No, it really doesn't because Ben Buren, they came out so strong early in this game, right? It's been the story for them twice now, building that early lead, showing how much offensive pressure they can put they can put on, but getting found out by these deep counterattacking looks. It just seems like they lose a little bit of their edge when they get scored on in that way. I, I don't know. It's, it's just so close. All of these have been one-goal games. They absolutely have. And th those last goals have come within, like, right before the, the game finishes. And so when we're looking at this game, number four now, if Rodgers take this one, if they're able to find another win, they will be your 2019 Fall Rocket League champions for the AAA. Uh, it's going to be a hard road if Van Buren want to come back. They have to win four in a row now, and with them struggling to finish out even a single game, it almost feels like an impossible task. It may feel that way, but really, Van Buren has played positively. They really have. They've jumped out to Leeds twice now early on in these games. They just really haven't been able to seal the deal at the end. It's the defense for them that has been the issue. When they're on offense and they're rotating through and they're playing together upfield, they look really, really strong. They've just been found out on defense a little bit. The positive is they can score, and I really think they can win these games, but now backs against the wall. Four games is a lot to ask. Well, when you back a Van Buren into a corner, it starts to fight back. Hopefully they can make that happen here in game number four. Hopefully five, even better, six, and ideally seven. I would love to see a series go all the way to the end today. The more Rocket League, the more rocket-powered psychic soccer you have, the better, I say. Oh, absolutely, because this has been such an even matchup between both teams. We said it earlier, it really doesn't feel like it's 3-0 in this series. It's just been so back and forth every way. I think Van Buren can do it, 
But the journey of a 1,000 miles starts with a single step. They have to come out in game number four here and take a victory. You have to at least build the first one. It's if Okay, if you can get one, can you get two yeah. and keep going? Absolutely. Let's go back to Rodgers, though, because you've been given a lot of credit over Van Buren, rightly. I mean, they have been playing phenomenally. But what a showing from Rodgers to take that good of a team, that caliber of a team, and just stop them, you know, dead cold. We've seen so many times that they've had only one goal up in the last minute, but never have they slipped and let that final goal through. That takes some that takes some talent and that really takes some uh, you know preservation too. It certainly does. Playing defense for extended periods like they do can be so exhausting. You're typically low on boost. You don't have the freedom to move upfield. You can feel boxed in and physically under pressure, right? when you're stuck in that stance, but give them so much credit. They have been able to withstand the attacks from Van Buren and they have found the plays on the counterattack. They've exposed Van Buren above the backboard, putting that ball high. They can stick with it. It's been working for them. They've won these games, but we're gonna jump right into game number four. Winner, Whoa. Fellow comes off quick with a look off the kickoff, but Butter's gonna turn that one away. This is the last game. If Rodgers takes it, they will take it all. You know they want it. They can taste the victory. Will Van Buren play villain and steal it away? Yes, and I expect more of the same from Van Buren here. You just you have to play with confidence and desire here. Absolutely nothing to lose. You have to win four straight. It starts here. Let's see if they can find that opening goal. Right now, Rodgers with the aggression. Butter just been the man back on defense, keeping these ones away. That was a good look. A little bit too far for Umbreon to complete on. He wasn't there quick enough. Here comes Butter with a good flick off the dribble. Dewey was there to set it up, but Monster was there first. And great anticipation from Monster to get high above the net there as another save coming out from Butter. Both teams playing really great defense early. Absolutely, Dewey going on the offensive. Not towards the ball, but towards the players. As in the backside, Butter comes up with another clutch save. Twice now coming across his near post, Butter has made the stop. Van Buren on the receiving end of that offensive pressure that we've talked so much about early. They might be able to capitalize on this though. Just barely left of the goal. JoJo is gonna look, take another look, but it's gonna be Umbreon taking that one downfield. Roger's gonna have a chance on the aggressive play here. All three members on the attack as Umbreon joins them. That one just above the goal. Umbreon, can he knock it backwards? Monster can't grab it in time. And that was almost a goal there for Rodgers. And it's just that little bit of hesitation and awkwardness from Van Buren that is opening up these chances for Rodgers. They just sometimes don't have the positioning correct to deal with these shots. This one might be straight in. Looking for it, Umbreon able to find the goal. And Rodgers this time will be up 1-0. And a great shot from Umbreon here as they have worked towards midfield. Such a nice finish from him. Finding that goal from midfield. Rodgers now with the lead in match point here. Let's, let's see if they can hold on to it. Three minutes left to play in regulation. Van Buren, they have not been able to come back from the one goal deficit. They want to make a change. That would be such a bad feeling if you went home so close so many games in a row, but I have faith. I think they can do this. I want to see more Rocket League. Van Buren is looking to give it to us. Yes, they certainly are, and they have demonstrated the ability to score. It's just, can they do it halfway through this game number four here? All the, all the pressure, everything on the line, someone needs to find that opening. Dewey might be looking for it here. A good look towards the goal. There it is! Off the defenders. Rogers High School will get the game tied up on them as Dewey here sneaks it past those two defenders into the net. He just finds such a nice touch on the outlet here. Dewey recognizing the defense is not in place. Just had to put that ball on frame to score. He does. Van Buren right back in it. Dewey comes up with a great look on kickoff into Jojo, but it is gonna be turned away. Is now contesting in the corner. Van Buren on defense. 
Good save there by Butter. I feel like a broken record with that, but he has been so solid on defense this round. He has absolutely stood on his head here to deny Rogers some of these looks, but this one is so close. Umbreon off the crossbar. Oh no, Umbreon is coming in with a fast goal, and it's going to be turned away once again. Rogers, they are getting aggressive here, but maybe a little bit too aggressive. You have to take your time and place these shots correctly. Oh, ceiling shot now for Umbreon. Can he finish it himself? No. But I love the looks that they're getting. Rogers have been so close to scoring here. Oh, and not able to find the defense that time. It will be Umbreon setting it up. Fellow knocking it down. And so close is Dewey here, working off of his own post, trying to get across that ball. But Rogers, give them credit. A flurry of shots in front of net, spreading that defense out. They find another one. 90 seconds to hold on for the state title. And we're in this situation, it seems, every single game where it comes down to the last minute, one goal away. Van Buren have to break the streak right here. It'll all be for not. They Dewey. do it! Dewey 4 1 3 coming in with the last clutch goal. Look at the individual effort from Dewey finding another touch off the wall, a third off the ground. Great individual effort from here. Dewey keeping his school's dreams alive. They find the equalizer. I love it from Van Buren. What a great response. Oh no, okay, that would have gone in. Fellow ripping the hopes and dreams of Van Buren away. After such a great goal, he comes in with the kickoff. Fantastic shot from him. And it's that fast kickoff from Fellow, finding that quick flip right into the kickoff can be so deadly when done correctly. And I thought that Van Buren had broken the curse, but once again, we are gonna enter the last minute as they are now in a two goal deficit. They came so close, but now they have so much more work in front of them. They certainly do. Dewey just not quite able to make contact there. That ball bouncing around after the kickoff fellow, just taking his shot and placing it into the goal there. So clinical from Rogers. And they're just, they're going to try and wait this out for 60 seconds. And Rogers in this high pressure scenario where the game is tied up for them. You know, one game away from the clean sweep, they're still able to find aggressive looks. This is such an incredibly talented team and they never stop pressing. No, they certainly do not. They have to have a ton of confidence in this spot here. Van Buren needs two, only 40 seconds now. They can dictate the pace of play because Van Buren, they have to go Dewey all out. Dewey has an open look at the goal. Can he find it? Throws it to JoJo, who comes over the top and drives it home. Now, just 30 seconds left, Van Buren, they still have a shot. Well, this is your lifeline. Dewey to JoJo, so much faith from Dewey to just set that ball atop his car, sort of tee it up for JoJo there. 30 seconds, it is definitely not impossible. Do not this count out Van Buren. It is game time here as Van Buren need one final goal to take this one into overtime and have a chance at extending this series. Will they be able to do it? Rogers coming out with the early aggression once again. Fellow and Umbreon, the two scorers, and there it is. They come in last 13 seconds. Umbreon on a great pass from Fellow and is it, able to find the lead. And it's just so, so unfortunate for Van Buren, two teammates running into one another. They know they have to make the stop there. It's just not quite enough. It's been the story of this series. Van Buren getting so close, but just not able to finish in these games. Van Buren hoping for a miracle. It would have to be a goal right here. And another one off kickoff. But with the timer hitting zero. Oh, are you Butter! kidding? Oh, uh, Butter comes in with a last second goal. Van Buren are now hoping for a kickoff goal. Once that timer hits zero, if the ball hits the ground, the series is done. Van Buren, they need nothing short of a miracle. It, it needs to happen right now. Just Can they do it? the score. Here we go. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. That one coming straight down. And it will be Rogers High School Mountaineers coming through with the 4-0 sweep. Although the series itself was back and forth, they come out on top in every scenario, and they walk home with as clean as a victory as you could hope. I don't know about that. Four one-goal games, so incredible from them. The ability from Rogers High School to close out these games. Van Buren came back 
every single game, really, they jumped out to leads. They were able to find the offense. They were finding goals in response. But Rodgers, every single time, able to shut it down. Yeah, that really speaks to the caliber of these players that in those high-pressure situations, that's what separates the good from the great. And Rodgers today, they were fantastic. They absolutely were so dynamic on offense. Congratulations to them. But we want to highlight a very special message here. One of our players for Van Buren High School, Dewey413, has just received a full scholarship to Leon College. Guys, this is the first player in play versus history to get a full ride to a college of their choice for playing esports. So congratulations to Dewey. His individual excellence will continue not only in the high school scene, but into the collegiate scene. And that is absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunate that it has to come after a loss. It's so painful. But we, but we saw he was a big reason of why Van Buren were so competitive in that game. Not only so many blocks on defense alongside Butter, but a lot of those late game goals that put them in striking range of the win came from Dewey 413. And it's it's things like this that really make you know, this entire scene worthwhile when you can see a player of that caliber has a obviously has a passion for this game and has a talent where he is exceeding at such a high level and now he gets to go to Lyon College and play on their team. They are lucky to have them and I'm sure Van Buren will be sad to see him go. They certainly will because they had such an incredible squad. They showed so much fight and character in this series. Ultimately though, it wasn't enough as we take one final look at our bracket here. Congratulations to the Mountaineers of Roger High School. They are your Arkansas Rocket League champion. They absolutely are. And hey, if you guys had fun watching this and you want to try it out yourselves, go on to playversus.com right now. That's playvs.com. They have registration open for their spring 2020 championships in multiple different esports. They've got Rocket League, they've got League, they have Smite. They've got so much, so go check them out if you want to get your team involved. Yes, and you can see, again, this is the first player in Play Versus History has now picked up a full scholarship to go to secondary education as well. So, so cool. Van Buren history. In yeah, Van Buren I, I'm, and I'm pretty sure we've had uh, you know, quite a few players you know, with scholarships. Is, you know, th this is just an entire scene. You know, it's, it's, it's what the goal is. It's to get these players to the next level. The stage is phenomenal for them. But we are going to have to wrap up the broadcast here. Don't worry, though. We'll be coming back with some more esports. Coming up next is League of Legends as we see the Arkansas Activities Association have their championships uh, for League. So thank you so much for joining Perino. I will be coming back for the League of Legends portion. So if you want to watch, stick around. Overwhelmingly, the, the support has been there with, man, I wish that had been available when I was in high school. I guess it was last fall, some of the students were starting to go, hey, can we get a gaming club going? But then uh, word came down that our athletic director was looking for someone to coach esports. And I said, this is something that, that's right up my alley. You know, I've, I've always been in tune with the geek kids, you know, the geeks, the nerds, whatever. That's my, that's my scene. That's what I was in high school. I mean, I've done it all. I've done computer-based stuff. I played World of Warcraft for about 10 years. The 360's in the house right now. The main thing that I did to help find interested students is I told all of my classes, if you have friends who are interested, please send them this way, that anybody can join. I'm not gonna limit this. For our first season playing, we have come in at approximately 23 kids. I've got one full League of Legends team. I've got three uh, Rocket League teams. That's where we started at, and I'm looking forward to it growing. To, to get started in this, it was let me learn about the games that are out there. Let me see what, what I need to figure out. And then I figured out that the kids are going to know more than I ever will. The opportunity for any kid to be skilled at something and be able to have the chance to pass that knowledge on, to look at somebody else and go, hey, I realize I'm not going to be here for more than a couple of years, and we want this team to keep doing well. Let's, let's get your skill up so that you can take my spot. Absolutely, that's part of giving the kids that bit of ownership in the sport. This is the first time we've done this at our school. How much of a legacy do you want to leave? Do you want to be the guy that's helping bring the next generation here at the school along? Or are you going to be the one who's like, no, I'm the best and I don't want anybody else to challenge me? When I've got my lead for League of Legends going, okay, we're invading here, I'm marking the point. Everybody get here, get here. They're, they're learning how to really work together and develop their skills. They're going to be able to use the rest of their lives. Here's your place where you can come in and be part of a team. 
Esports gives that kid who, who is a gamer that chance to be involved in the school and maybe help them develop more school pride than what they've had. They can say, hey, I was part of this. And that they now have the opportunity to letter in it gives them a reason to go out and say, hey, you know, maybe I do want to buy that letterman's jacket. Maybe I do want to build some memories about high school that will last and, and be worthwhile. Ultimately, being a coach is opening doors for students to find their way to belong in a school that they don't have through any other means. So let's grow it. Let's make the, the school a more welcoming place for everybody.